All right, let's try to finish up this sock puppets meeting. I've been so busy with the calls, I've had no rippy. He's on vacation in California. So I've got to do it all myself, and I'm not as fast as him anyway. So I've been spending way too much time on the call since he's been gone. But I want to I want to get this stupid board meeting finished. Uh, boy, the uh, the TriMet has really been awful lately, man. I, the two max disruptions have just led to buses being canceled. I mean, a complete breakdown of the transit system. And nobody knows about it. The transit system has been a complete and total failure for the last two days. I don't know what's going on today. I haven't heard. I haven't seen any uh, disruptions today. Uh, let's take a quick check here. But, I mean, the last two days, it's just been a goddamn nightmare for TriMet riders. You know, they don't have, they don't have any uh, backup for when this shit goes bad over there. Oh, no. Look here. Look, here it goes. Another goddamn max disruption. This time it's a mechanical. This is just, you know, this is embarrassing. They, I, they should be embarrassed at how bad their service is. And, you know, I just saw them on the board talking about how reliable they've been. It's complete bullshit. Just, it's a complete bullshit lie. You know, they're just, they just lie. They're like Trump, man. They just lie after lie after lie. And there's nobody to, to call them out on it. Uh, what's this? The fatal collision is being invested as a suicide. Oh, yeah. The, the driver didn't sound too upset over it. Some people handle that. Oh, my God. Look at this. Here's another one. I mean, this, the system is shit. The system is shit. Mm. I mean, my God, I mean, Jesus. Triment operators, would you rather take a, with a very hard, or operator? I'm not an operator, so I can't answer that. <clears throat> I'll answer it anyway. Ah, uh -huh. Oh, God. All right. Anyway, back to this. Now, let's make a few more comments. As we've been seeing these last uh, board meetings, um, what we've seen and what people should realize is that... What is this? No, I don't want that. Is that uh, these bureaucrats... They decide what they're going to do, and then they bring it out for public hearing, and then they do it anyway. So you see how this operates? The public doesn't get any input at all into what's going to be done. The technocracy makes all the decisions. And then they put it out for public hearing, and the public hearings don't matter. It's complete. It's a complete nothing. And we've seen this with all of these changes in this presentation by this guy here. Nice memo. You know, they, they, they make all the decisions and then they go out for public hearing. And they very, 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 very rarely, it's very unusual to see them change anything. And don't forget, they're professional liars. The transit system, just like all of government, exists for the people that get money from it. It doesn't exist for the people. The people are fleeced out of their money and the people that run these bureaucracies make all the money that the taxpayers give them and uh, the service is pretty horrendous man i mean the service is horrendous i mean japan has 99.9 percent .9 reliability but this is america we can't do anything right here because it's all profit based i mean they've they've uh they scrimped on actually the the system itself, they have no backup, they have not enough people in maintenance, and they have disgruntled employees over there, I imagine, because they're trying to screw over the apprentice program. So they have a mess. They, they created a mess to uh, implement their neoliberal agenda, no, and I wouldn't take TriMet. 
Are you kidding me? You're so unreliable, man. All it takes is for you to get stranded once. And you're done with it. If you have an option. I mean, if you have no option, you're stuck with it. But anybody allows them, that allows themselves to be dependent on government transportation is an idiot. Now, let's see if we can get through this mess. Carl? Thank you, Tom. Fellow direct, Director Bauman, fellow Board of Directors, thank you, and good afternoon. Jeff, could you go to the next slide, please? They have plenty of minority faces now, and they're very proud of that. Too bad it doesn't do anything. Too bad the service is still shit. It doesn't mean anything. It's virtue signaling. Yes, I'm happy that sometimes they allow people of minority groups to make money now. They, they finally stopped being all the white people get all the pork. They've allowed minorities to get this pork. That's great, but that doesn't help anybody on the ground or in the ditch. That doesn't help real people. Oh, so the Civil Rights Act of 1964 provides the legal footing to ensure... That doesn't mean anything anymore. You know that, right? It means nothing. I hope you've been paying attention because the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is pretty much been undone here, okay? The Trump era ended all of this. And places like Georgia are going backwards and places in the South are suppressing voting. And the government and the, the so-called Supreme Court, which is nothing but a tool of the oligarchy, has announced that corporations are people. So this, this doesn't mean anything. This is all virtue signaling are upholding the assurances under Title VI. Title VI. The Federal Transit Administration nothing. provides a Title VI circular which gives the, the guidance and the policy directives to ensure that bureaucracy for bureaucracy is particularly trimet to ensure that we are not creating inequitable impacts for minority and... You know, the problem is you have racists that do work there. I mean, if anybody has worked there, they know the organization isn't racist, but there's racists that work there. Okay, just like everywhere. And what are you going to do about that? You're not going to do anything about it because you can't do anything about it. Because that's the culture we live in. We live in a culture that rewards this kind of behavior. That wants strife within the citizens, which wants the citizens at each other's throat. That way they can continue to steal everything while we're fighting with each other and low-income populations. So with that being said, the Title VI circular requires that TriMet prepare and submit an equity analysis before the TriMet board to be made aware, consider... Yeah, and it's all, it's all baloney. I've watched this. It doesn't mean anything. It's completely useless. It's just a le another level of bureaucracy for bureaucracy's sake. And approve of this service equity analysis. Next they didn't do a Title VI equity analysis when they cut bus service. 20% did they? Which proves my point. But look at this crap, will you? So the graph before you look provides at this baloney. a conceptual... Look at, look at this. Look, change, fair change. Disparate impact, my major service change. Yes, no, no action. Yes, look, arrow, just bro, yes, no, add, no. Look at this, change court. It's just bullshit. It's nonsense. This is your bureaucratic nonsense. Review of the Title VI service equity analysis. So moving from left to right, you will see that the first component of the equity analysis is to determine whether or not a service change meets the major service change threshold. In the event that it does, you can see the decision tree saying, yes, if it does, then TriMet is required to evaluate the possible impacts. Yeah. And what we're evaluating is per our board adopted Title VI program, there is two policies within that. There is the disparate impact policy. And they mean nothing. They've done nothing. They produce nothing. And the disproportionate burden. Both of these policies provide the thresholds and the methodology to assess whether or not there is a disparate impact. And if there is, Moving to that last column where we must evaluate alternatives in order to avoid, minimize, or mitigate any of those said adverse impacts. 
So bottom line is if there's any impacts, we will need to change course or address it. Next slide, please. This supposed to be. So based off of the presentation that Tom previously mentioned, there was a number of service changes made or that is being proposed rather for the FY22 service proposal. Based off the analysis and using the major service change threshold, there were a number of lines that met that threshold. And the lines before you here, which I'll read off, the Northwest Thurman Street, the line 15, the line 19, the line 32, the line 63, and the line 93. These are all the lines that met the major service change thresholds. The other lines, although they had changes made to them or are being proposed, they do not constitute a major service change, so they are not included in this analysis. Next slide, please. I just saw that. What, I'm, what this is communicating, what this slide is communicating, is to demonstrate that there are different types of analyses for each different, for each major service change. So there's major service increases, there's major service reductions, and then there's crap? also major service, other major service changes. As far as this anal equity analysis goes, there were three ser major service increases and three major service reductions. Next slide. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So as I mentioned earlier, TriMet's disparate impact and disproportionate burden policies have established thresholds to evaluate these possible impacts. And the type of analysis that's prescribed within our program is applied at the line level and also at the system level analysis. Yeah. Next slide. What is this? Look at this. What this graph here is to demonstrate the testing for a disparate impact at the single line level. You know, look at look at how the bureaucrats function. Will you look at this? It's bureaucracy for bureaucracy's sake. I mean, look at this. It's just unbelievable that this is done even. So what's important... So what you have is a bunch of elites, everybody on the bottom here, getting six-figure incomes, are, are deciding tra for transit users what is right. None of these people ride any of this stuff, I'm sure. But they don't do it. They do it occasionally, probably, but not, not as a primary means of transport. To note is what we're looking at here is for each individual line, we are looking at the service area population using the census data. They don't use this with Max, by the way. You notice this is only for bus service. Max gets a waiver of everything. Max, you know, somebody bleeds on Max, no big deal. Somebody shits on Max, no big deal. Somebody pukes on Max, no big deal. When they have the service cuts, they barely touch the Max. Uh, they don't do any of this for the Max. This is all about the bus service. It, there's a double standard. Eric Alstead has pointed it out many times, and there's, it's certainly true. Around that particular route, assessing the change of that route and comparing it to the service district average. So for the TriMet Service District average for people of color or minority, it's 30%. But by way of to account for a margin of error, we also apply a three, per, three percentage points to that threshold. So as you can see on the screen before you on, on the slide, that there is a red, red dotted line which that? indicates the threshold. <laughs> so what we're ridiculous. doing in that, in that second bar of this graph if there, since it's a service, if there are service reductions, if the minority or low-income population is above that threshold, this is indicating that those populations are receiving more of the burden. And given that there, we're also seeing service increases. If it's below the minority population or low-income population is below that threshold, then that may see, that indicates that they're receiving a receiving less of the benefit. So the point to be made is that we conduct this analysis at the line level to assess individual impacts for each individual service change that met the major service change threshold. And if it does create an adverse impact or potential adverse impact, we flag it for further analysis. And then also, we also, as I mentioned earlier. Don't you feel confident having these people in charge of your transit system? I sure do. Ah, uh, ah. Uh.
we look at this at the, at the system level analysis, which will be demonstrated on the next slide, please. What is this? Looking? So let, as I meant, let, shut up. Let me look at this. Testing for disparate impact. What is this? You can't even figure this out. The fuck is this? The fuck is this? Explain it. Mentioned the testing for disparate impact at the system level. It's slightly different from the line level where it's taking into account all of the reductions and all of the service increases combined <laughs> in order to assess the, the network or the system oh level God. impact of the proposed changes in totality. So the threshold that's applied here is what was approved by the board as part of our 2016 and 2019 Title VI program is applying for the application of a 20% rule or for or the 20% threshold for the four fifths rule. So I hope you're following this because I have no idea what he's talking about. None of this makes any sense to me. None of it. Difference in comparison to the line level where you're comparing the service area for a particular line against the service district average. What you're looking at here between the blue bar graph or the blue bar and the orange bar is you're looking at the percentage of non-minority population impacted. First, you get as a baseline, you assess that. And then from there, you also look at the impact, whether it's an increase or decrease for the percentage of the minority or low-income population as a whole. And as you the disparity range, so if you go, if you look up to where it says major service reduction, if it's over that 20% above the non-minority level, then that indicates that minority populations are receiving more of the burden. So from a conceptual basis, Makes this, no sense. these previous two slides is no idea what the they're doing. Of the type of analysis that we that we do. And in finer detail in the board report pages seven through fourteen will detail the line level analysis. And page 15 through 18 will give an overview and more detailed level on the system-wide level analysis. But for time's sake, I'll go over the system level in the next couple slides. Next slide, please. So again, as I... All right, let me look at it. Yeah, it makes no... I mean, who knows what they're talking about? I, who knows? You can't decipher. This doesn't make sense. Only they know what they're doing. I mentioned before there are two different types of analysis in this. The for service improvement. Can you believe people get paid to produce this garbage? Can you believe that? There are increases and for service reductions or decreases. I'll first start with the improvements. So the main takeaway here from this table is although there is a slightly lower percentage, so 1.8% is, which is the third column of this table. So although a slightly lower percentage of the district's minority population will be positively impacted, for our Title VI policy, the findings do not result in a disparate impact. Yeah, they've never, they've never found that, their findings have never found them guilty of anything when it comes to this, okay? <laughs> I wonder why that is. <laughs> If you look at these, the are not the right people to evaluate TriMet. These people are all, they're all cheerleaders for TriMet, okay? There's no, it's a cult over there. If you don't support them and and say rah, rah, shish, boom, ba over everything they do, you get the boot. And if you dare speak up, you get the boot even faster. Second column where it, it states minority population disparate impact threshold it's less than 6%. Well, yeah, well, so the minority population would have to be below <laughs> that 1.6% to show a finding, but because it doesn't make any sense at all. percent is well or it has a couple percentage points above or percents above that 1.6%. I don't think he then it's knows not that. a disparate impact. I don't even finding. think he knows what he's talking so about. So that is basically saying we're we're good to go on that front as far as for the service improvements for minority populations. <laughs> so next slide please. So similarly, we also looked at this, uh, looked at the impact with regards to low-income population. 
So a great, in this case, a greater percentage of the district's low-income population will be positively impacted. And again, this does not result in a disproportionate burden. Well, of course not. Everything is fine. Just ask the TriMet executive. population exceeds that of higher income population. Just ask them to tell you what to do. Next slide. So now as we look at the, the opposite, as we're looking at the service reductions, similar findings as in the sense of where we can, where it shows that a lower percentage of the district's minority population will be negatively impacted. So per the Title VI policy, the findings do not result in a disparate impact. So as you can see, the threshold is more than 1.34, but you can see that the negative impact 0.53% is less than that threshold and also less than what the non-minority population, the, the negative impact in comparison to, to that population. So this is showing that minority populations stand to receive less of the burden of the service reductions. Next slide. And similar to the previous slide for the disproportionate burden, which is looking at low income population in comparison to higher income, a lower percentage of the low income populations will be negatively impacted. And per our policy, it does not result in a disproportionate burden. Next slide. So the, the analysis is very, it's, it's a data centric approach and and it, it takes the better half of, of a few weeks working with service planners, and, and we're having a number of different conversations. But as I as I look at the overall report and the equity analysis, this this is a, this is a good good report, and it's favorable for Title VI protected populations. So I'll go ahead and read off some of the the analysis conclusions, which is important for the board of directors to note is that there are no yeah we can believe everything they say they're always so honest in everything they tell you who knows we don't know what the hell they're doing this doesn't mean anything to anybody except the people that do this i don't know what the hell they're talking about do you well disparate impact or disproportionate burden for the major for the three major service increases or the three major service decreases second what service all increases are lines in service areas with below average minority population. What service? Are there, are there some service being increased somewhere? I didn't hear about that. Did you? What, what are you talking about? But it must it must be said that two of the three improvements will expand the service area for minority populations. Thus, this would not indicate a potential impact for minority populations after the further after we further examined the changes. The minority populations don't live in Portland anymore. I don't know what they're talking about. They've all been pushed out. So what minority populations? Are there any minority populations left? Maybe what up on uh, the far reaches of MLK Boulevard? I mean, it's, I know the Alberta area has all been gentrified. And I used to drive the Route 8, and we had a layover at Deacom and 15th. And I went by there before I left Portland. And it... it Everything was gentrified. It was not anything like what it was when I used to drive that bus. Uh, so where are the minority population? In, I know they're not in Portland anymore. I don't know what I don't know where they are anymore. And then lastly, all improvements are online. Is the H still average or above low-income populations? And as I mentioned earlier, as a result, a greater share of the region's low-income populations stand to benefit as compared to higher-income populations. So with th that being said, the results of the service equity analysis does not require a modification of the proposed changes. Next slide. So at this point in time, this just outlines the next steps as far as what, what you have before you. Tom wonderfully went over the FY22 service proposal, and I followed up with the service equity analysis. That's part of our process. And in addition to receiving the public hearing and the and the public in, public involvement and community engagement, it now sets the stage for the board again to yeah the public hearing and the community engagement happens after they've already made all these decisions, and then the public you know they've already put up a chart of like all these negative comments on some of their changes, but they didn't they didn't change anything as a result of they're not going to change the Hollywood even though we know. We know that what that is. That is that is sacrificing bus riders for developers. We don't need any equity analysis for that. We know what it is. You don't need to explain that to me. They're selling out to the developers, which is what they always do. 
They're selling the Hollywood Transit Center to a developer so he can make a killing. As far as they're destroying the transit point. And Jim Howell made it clear. I mean, you're destroying the Hall. There is no Hollywood Transit Center anymore. You, you just, you're getting rid of it. How's that equitable? It's not. So all of this shit is shit. And nobody's going to call them out on it. Nobody's going to say anything. Nobody that, you know, the mainstream media won't touch any of this. They won't go near any. There's no negative trimet coverage in the media. Zero. There's no coverage at all. Completely under the radar. That you've been made aware and you considered and you and you worked and you moved to approve of the equity. And the stock puppets just do it. From told. there, I believe that is done at the second board reading on April 28th. Now open up the floor for any questions. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> any questions? Yeah. The like, what the fuck are you doing? Come on, somebody say something. I've, I've got something. Come on, Ozzy. Okay, um, go ahead. I have, of, then, Keith. I have a lot of faith in Ozzy to be able to do something here. Come on. Thank you. Um, if you understood that, Ozzy, please enlighten me. I appreciate all the work from the Oh, staff don't start the cheerleading. Please don't cheerlead. Please stop it. Don't give me, oh, well, you appreciate all of it. They're getting fucking a fortune to do this shit. They're getting six-figure incomes. And you appreciate the hard work? They don't hard. They're not working hard. They're at home. What the fuck are you talking about? Cut that out. Information. Um, clearly, it's a batch of, of activities, and it's kind of hard to, to parse out um, you know, where, where the focus needs to be. But I want to point out for the board and the public that there's some special concerns I want to bring up right now. And I know we're in the first reading here, um, so I want to make sure you're aware of them up front. Um, clearly, we've all, as the board, received a lot of letters um, specific to the, the few lines. I want to point out the most, the most information we've received happened to be in within the District 2 jurisdiction um, and so I feel especially uh, obligated to um, bring to you all of the sentiments that are coming from the community that I'm hearing. And um, I got to say, you know, in this time of, of post-pandemic, as we're trying to build up our ridership again, I'm a little bit nervous about changes to the context in general, just because, you know, we're, we're trying to get people re-familiarized with the you. system. So, you know, I'm not You're sure right. what that does in the ridership That's equation. That's right. You're right. Um, Good for you. I, but what makes me more nervous and, and really uh, uh, hard to stomach is the reductions in service. And I know there's a few areas where there's some re overall reduction to the service in right. addition to some changes. So right. the reductions the are where I, I'm normal. getting a lot of uh, stomach ache from the community. And I'm, I, I want to make sure that... The agency is um, really responsive. Who made a decision to reduce this? Why, who's, who's, why are you reducing service in the first place? And don't give me this shit about the fares. Okay, you haven't reduced capital projects. Stop lying to us, you fucking technocrats. We're not all stupid. To those concerns coming from the community, especially around the 15, line 15, and um, the connection to that other new smaller um, yeah. vehicle service. Yes, they don't um, want I that. I really, uh, I think... That's that right, he's right. After 50 years, they've decided to cut the Thurman loop. After 50 years. Okay? That's despicable. There, they're getting the double whammy. It's a change of context and a change of service. Um, and it's an mm -hmm. overall reduction. Um, so I really think we should look deeply at addressing those concerns. I'm not sure this is the time to be reducing service. I know ridership is used as part one of the one of the arguments here, but um, we're also trying to increase ridership. So tailoring ourselves to low ridership doesn't always get us there. Um, so I'd like to um, really beseech the staff to get, to sharpen their pencils on this and come back with some alternative service proposals oh. that are addressing the, the reduction in service primarily in that area. I right. think it's an important there you go, one. Ozzy. Okay. And I think in addition to that, I want to make sure that in, in the other area around the, the Arlington Heights, Washington Park line, line 63, 
that we are properly coordinating with our partners um, in the, at the Washington Park Shuttle. It sounds to me like there's a clear conversation that started. What it's not clear yet is how that conversation will continue because we're now moving into interdependence. And so we have uh, the potential for changes in service coming from the show. What they f- failed to mention with that Washington Park shuttle, shuttle is that they're, they're going to force a lot of riders on the shuttle and they're going to have to transfer to the 63 to get downtown. There's no longer one bus from that area up there to downtown Portland. They've destroyed that connection. They said, oh, the shuttle, where does that go? Uh, does the shuttle go downtown? I don't think it did, did it? I think it just went around that area. It goes it goes around the Washington Park. Shuttle, or I'm not sure when service begins or how we're coordinating the, the timing of stops, but certainly those ongoing conversations need to make sure that we're bringing that shuttle community or, or that shuttle service to the rigor that we would apply to changes in service. So we should be a partner in that. Um, so I'm concerned that uh, that I don't see enough of that, so maybe it's just it hasn't it hasn't really that work hasn't been brought to light. But I want to make sure we're coordinating with them, and of course the Japanese Garden, who is now going to be a potential core anchor uh, anchor resident in the 15 line. So um, you know I, I appreciate that you brought us a batch of stuff. What do you mean the 15 line? The 15 line doesn't go near there. It's, there's so much to respond to, but I gotta say. Um, it, there's a little bit of, of stomach ache about the reduction in service. District 2 has high density, and, and we're trying to bring ridership back. So right. please make sure we're coordinating properly with those partners, no, no, um, no, like no. anchor tenants, uh, as well as those other service partners, so that we're addressing um, the biggest concerns of community. I think as, as one of our public forum comments came, um, we got to focus on the, the people moving. I think that's really key. So please... Take that back don't to your desk. Tell and them I what love to do. To see. Don't say please. You're the head. You're the board. You tell them what to do. Stop being. Stop being secondary to these bureaucrat technocrats. You you board. Start telling them what you want, not the other way around. Um, some coordinated effort with those partners and a service or an alternative service proposal with better service than we've currently seen. How about you line. get rid of the uh, service cuts completely? Keep the Thurman shut. Keep the Thurman loop, and keep all the other ones. Just, just keep it. Don't even go. In, don't even go to service changes right now. I mean, that's his point. I believe you're trying to get ridership back, and here you are messing with the system. Is that smart? The answer is no. You're tr- you're trying to build your ridership back, but you're going to make these changes, which is going to make less people available to to use. And that is terrible. This is just. A bunch of bureaucrats who have nothing else to do. Who knows what they're doing in the, behind the scenes here? They come up with this shit. Fifteen. That's a major thing. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for your comments, uh, Director. We'll we'll definitely take them back and and talk with staff about the the points that you've made today. Yeah, sure. You're you're so credible. Keith, do you want to go ahead? Come on, Keith. Thank you, Thank you Director Bauman. I um, echo some of Ozzy's concerns. Um, Director Gonzalez has brought some issues uh, forward that um, certainly I'm uh, concerned about as well. I appreciate um, the presentation today. It's a lot to digest. Um, however, I I still do have some questions and. And I know it's hard sometimes to um, to uh, break it down to um, these individual concerns or, or the or the smaller um, you know the the ground level issues that, that that we come up against when we have our, our constituents that express their issues and concerns. But I I wanted to ask Carl um, uh, what is a minority under the um, under the Title Nine? Yeah, yeah, um, Title Six. Uh, I'd like to know what that definition well, that's, is. That's good. Um, I also had a question regarding um, line eleven, and is that is that the Wapato site that um, that that loops it toward the end? And I'd like to know um, what, what the demographics look like in regards to line thirty nine in the Hollywood district, because we're we're talking about uh, folks that um, have a um, 
have to commute, you know, have to get on the ground from one point to another point to continue um, being serviced. And I'd like to know if we have folks that are, um, um, when we look at those demographics, or do we have some folks with disabilities that are having to get yes. out from those points? And yes, you I do. have a hard time um, justifying um, um, a, um, a challenge in, in getting from point A to point B on one end just because they have to get from point A to point B on the other end of their, um, of their commute. Um, that, that doesn't justify it for me, I'm sorry. Um, but because um, it's, it's sometimes it's bad enough. It's like it's it's almost like the old adage, you know, when folks say I had to. They should definitely vote down the Hollywood Transit Center changes, but they won't because that's the property owner class, and the property owner class owns the government, and they're not gonna they're, they're gonna make that go through, even though that's the worst thing I've seen come out of TriMet in years since I got rid of Fairless Square. And they got rid of the zones. This is the worst thing since then. Walk up up, up the hill both ways um, to get to where I had to get to, and and I don't think that's um, that's a fair analysis when we say that uh, someone has to. Um, they already have to walk on the other end, so it's not going to hurt them. To yeah, walk on yeah, this good for you, well. Keith. Yeah. So I think that some you good know, we comments, have to but go back like they get some good comments lately. At least we don't have a bunch of brain dead sock puppets that aren't. I've spent years listening to these meetings and the sock puppets have been like nothing. Just give the management whatever it wants, no real discussion. At least we're getting some discussions now, which stopped when they got rid of Van Beveren and uh, what was his name? Uh, that guy that, I forgot his name off there. There used to be actual dissent on this board and then they got Warner and uh, got rid of that, that one guy that used to uh, actually stand with the union I, well, I can't think of his name he, he died he was a union man like, um director gonzalez say said and and reconsider uh, some of the um um decision making that we have in regard to um these uh, particular lines and even though they may not meet the threshold of major um under the um under the guidelines i think we still have to remember that we're we're servicing people and and um, um, just because there, you know, there may be a few people that are riding, or less people that are riding today because of COVID, that we don't, um, that that may not, that may change um, going forward. And so, if we start taking services away, then um, certainly our ridership is going to go down and, and may not come back. So I think that's something that has to be considered as well. Thank you. And I, I apologize. I'm going to have to leave in about five minutes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Linda, I think you had your hand raised. Uh-oh. I wanted to give Carl an opportunity. Do you have the definition uh -oh. of what is a minority for uh, Keith? Yes, thank you, Director Simmons. The definition by way of the Federal Tran Transit Administration, the circular, is all race and ethnicities other than non-white, <laughs> non-Hispanic whites. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. Thank you. Everybody but white man. Is that helpful, Keith? Thank, thank that that is helpful, but I I get concerned because there are other um, um, quote-unquote uh, minority populations um, that um, have to be served as well, such as those with disabilities. Um um, there may be physical disabilities or other disabilities, and I think we, you know, that that should be considered as well. Okay, okay Lori, um, I asked to speak, and one of the things I want to bring to the rest of the board's attention mm -hmm. is this is our last time to see Carl Green, because Carl has uh, accepted a position oh, he's out of there. with the transit agency in Denver. He's and gone. I just want to go on record. Bye bye. Him He's for gone. What he has Technic done. Musical cheers. Musical cheers over at the transit people. To develop our response and analysis yeah, yeah, to Title yeah, Six, yeah, yeah. um, you're going to be greatly missed. Um, it feels like, from my perspective, your time with us has been very short. Uh, 
Denver obviously attracted you uh, for maybe more reasons than the, just the job. Oh, yeah. um, they have more snow, by the way. Um, but you are going to be missed, and I'm just grateful for uh -oh. the contribution. Stop the presses. Stop the presses. Stop the presses. Members of ATU and TriMet, we are excited and proud to announce the parties have reached a tentative agreement. And no, this is not an April Fool's joke. Uh-oh, this has been a long and hard-fought road. The party started meeting over a year and a half ago and have been in the deep trenches since. Legal battles, a pandemic, fires, just about everything else. But yeah, yeah, it's been every, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like all negotiations, it was give and take. Let's see. What do they got here? Three-year contract with wage increases. How much? Double the short-term disability benefit under the new law. So health care will remain status quo. Okay. Changes in dis discipline language, including the addition of a sunset for warnings. Changes to hours of service. Vacation fixes. Significant increase to both. Okay, at least I gave the bus, bus and rail uh, road relief. Five-minute increase in prep time. <laughs> yeah, okay, 10 minutes was ridiculous. Expanded night differential. Agreement on Boley registered apprenticeship program for bus maintenance. Preserved the training for REM. Developed a new training tuition payment plan. Solidified hiring. So what? So wait a minute. Is it, this sounds good. Is it good? Wait a minute. Uh, there, so there's there's a um, hmm. that you made here while you were here, and they're definitely um, gaining a tremendous asset. So thank you, Carl. Thank you. And a little less oxygen, so. Take oh, some with yeah. you. That too. That too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, I'll, and, I'll, from us. and I'll just share before I go as well. Um, thank you very much, Carl. Yes, um, Carl. We, we all love, love you. Yes, yes. You yes you cheers. You're great, great. You're great. You're wonderful. Yay yeah, for you. So, <laughs> we <laughs> yeah, we you already you, know buddy. that. But, but the work that you've done has been, I really appreciate it because it's so comprehensive and, and so detailed. And it helps give us um, a, a really good look at, at um, all the issues that we have to be concerned about in making these decisions. So thank you again for that. But um, I'm not happy to hear that you're leaving. So I hope well, it works out well for you. Or, so or selfishly, I'll say I hope it works out bad and you come back. Well, <laughs> and, and I, I want to extend one more thing here in recognizing Carl, through your work, and, and I want to thank you for it as well. Through your work, you have actually helped establish a strong program uh, here in China. Oh. Um, you've done a great job yeah, with wonderful. setting up the analysis and, the, and how it informs policy. Um, but the training and the advocacy uh, have, have put seeds in the ground, I think, that are going to help foster uh, a great culture, um, clearly makes this something that's top of mind throughout decision making. So. You know, uh, thank you. Beyond beyond you yourself, what you leave behind here at TriMet is, is certainly something we we hope to hold up. So uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, certainly uh, at Denver, and um, you know, just keep looking back over here with us. Make sure we're holding true to what you have helped us build. Jesus. Mm. Yes, we're I, as I understand it, our our. Uh, our standards around equitable service are more stringent than the law requires. So that's right. Um, that's that's a a great mark in our favor. Uh, Linda, did you have something else? You're muted. <laughs> I, I just wanted to also say, if I can, thank you all for the for the sentiments and the comments. And I'd be remiss if I wouldn't say that for the board's leadership and, and TriMet in general, being able to work across the agency at the division and department level, it's, although I was managing or administering the program, it was a, a testament of the, the staff yeah. at TriMet and their commitment to transit equity and just knowing that we have a, a great board in order to lead us in that direction 
to make sure that we are ensuring that we're distributing service, we're making different changes with top of mind that transit equity and Title VI protected populations are on the forefront of our decisions because on the backs of many when we're thinking about the Civil Rights Act of 1964, that's what gives me the passion. So I love being able to leave TriMet in a good place. So thank you all. Yes, goodbye. We'll see another thank face you. in your spot tomorrow. You know, Keith, uh, Keith has to leave. It's different. 1 o'clock. I, I had a question, but I think maybe I'll just send it by email to, to Tom Mills um, because this has been a long uh a long day. So um, I guess I would ask the board if you have other questions, why don't we, uh, why don't we do it uh, through do staff, um, through direct contact, if you Yeah, yeah, Jeff. keep it out of the public view. Right? Uh, okay. Is there any other, Mr. General Manager, is there any other business for the board? There's no other business and no other comments. Just want to thank everybody for participating today. All right, bye-bye, okay. bye-bye. So this is big news here, folks. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, rantings of a TriMet bus driver. Let's read this. Huh. Well, you go to my blog if you want to see it. It sounds like TriMet caved to the union. Now, why would they do that? Wage increases 0.3. Is it say, oh, 3%? Eh, that's not so hot. All right, check the blog for the union update. I'll make a separate, well, you can read it over there, over and out.